Hello, Polygon fanatics. We are back with another episode of the last week in Pico, our eighth episode in the series. And as usual, we're going to start off looking at the Polygon ecosystem index and the price action for the past week. And then we're going to discuss the news regarding our constituents and what is happening there this past week or a little bit longer than a week because of other things going on. But as you can see, once you log into the tokens.amun.com dashboard, you can see 14% um, return on income in the last 30 days. Market cap still almost close to a million dollars. Very good. Very happy. Who wouldn't be happy with that? So let's start off at the beginning of the week. So one week ago on January 10th, right? Pico was at $6.6. .6. Then we have this dip that happened last week, $6.3. Moving up up and we stop at January 13th at $7.5. Okay, so it had a lot of horizontal action until then, but we're still peaking, maybe peaking yesterday. It is today at Monday, 3 a.m. GMT, $7.7. .7. And we're hovering about this level today. It is 4.50 p.m. Taiwanese time and uh, still Pico looking very good. The allocations are, of course, to change a little bit, but the constituents are still the same. Okay, and let's move on to the first piece of news, which is about Matic. So it says, Eth Global, your road to Web 3.0 starts here. Apply now, web3.ethglobal.com. Interested in building Web 3 but don't know where to start? Announcing Road to Web 3. Build your first Web 3 application, win thousands in prizes, meet new friends from around the world, learn from the best. Okay, so what I imagine this is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? I mean, Python actually, I don't, I didn't learn much of Java back in the day, but yeah. So this is cool. So if you're a programming person or a little bit about programming, you might consider entering, right? Thousands in prices. So I would imagine they have a tiered system. We don't know too much about this because it was just announced, but it's, it's cool, right? Like Web3 is the future. We talked about this on our previous podcast. Uh, with Gnome from Cointelegraph and from CryptoProof. He talked about Web3 and explained what it is. And you know, Web3 is the next generation of the internet. And we should be getting more people to building applications for it. And I can think of, of lots of ideas that I'd like to do in the Web3 universe. But yeah, no. So do you guys have any ideas? Like if you are a programmer or not even if you're not a programmer, what kind of apps would you like to see in the Web3 metaverse oh i said it i had to say it right there all right and let's move on to our next story for today our next story for today is a little bit like towards last week five days ago january 12th from the daily huddle another famous cryptocurrency publication uh, media giant associated press right ap they choose polygon for their new nft marketplace so the ap is getting into nfts and that's something i'm excited about i'm a big news person which explains a lot. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing shows like this. So the AP has, it's an old news organization as well. So I can imagine, and this sort of article goes into it, right? That it'll, it'll feature images that the news agency's photographers have captured for nearly two centuries, 200 years or almost 200 years. I can imagine some of the old photos, like if you are a historical person like me, who, who's into sort of old things and antiques and stuff, this will really pique your interest and this has piqued my interest. I'd love to buy some sort of old photos from the early 1900s. They'll be black and white for sure, but NFT versions of these photos, that would be cool. Like just for my personal collection, not for any monetary gain or anything, something to look back on and contemplate history and that sort of stuff. Now, the interesting about this, right, it says the AP's NFT partner and technology provider in the initiative is blockchain technology from Exu. Or XOOA, I've never heard of them because most people are familiar with NFTs for Ethereum, familiar on Avalanche, familiar on Solana, familiar on Cardano as well, because I've talked about them, but I don't know who these people are. So, of course, let's check out their website. So, XOOA, right, build blockchain apps fast. XOOA empowers all of blockchain expertise levels to build NFT marketplaces and other blockchain apps on the cloud fast through a streamlined and easy to use interface, take advantage of XOOA's low code tools, API, and many other powerful features to generate up to 10 times faster time to app and 95% shorter learning curve. In easy English, what this means is that it's faster to build your app, right? And it's fast to learn the system that they're using in order to build your app, right? 
easy to use. This does look pretty easy. Fiat and crypto payments. That's nice. You guys heard me talk about OpenSea. And OpenSea has this sort of fiat on-ramp where if you don't have crypto, but you have a wallet, you can use OpenSea's fiat on-ramp to purchase crypto directly through MoonPay or Wire. It'll go straight to your wallet. And from your wallet, you can purchase your NFT and then you're set. Uh, custodial wallets for mainstream, non-custodial wallets for crypto enthusiasts. So this both sets of people, custodial wallets, right? For your grandma, your uncle, your cousin who's 17, who's not a tech person, right? And non-custodial wallets for crypto enthusiasts, sort of like me, but more other people. Comprehensive feature set, NFT Studio and UGC. Uh, UGC is user generated content, embeddable seller storefronts, right? So you could have a website and you could have multiple people having their own storefronts on your site. Mint unlimited editions of an NFT, user management, social fe features, uh, full compliance and IP protection. That's important, right? Uh, protect against malicious users. Of course, that's a problem in crypto. Royalties management, right? Mintable has that. I told you guys about the story of me selling my first NFT. White label capabilities, permissioned or public chain. All right, very cool. So choose your blockchain. So you can deploy an app on Ethereum or Polygon or deploy on a centralized blockchain. I like that carbon footprint and gas fees dependent on chosen chain. I can't wait to see the AP launch their own NFT platform on XOOA. And hopefully they do it on Polygon because Ethereum is still expensive and still more expensive than what I want to pay. Maybe Solana would be a solution as well, although they don't mention Solana on the bottom. But that is very interesting. NFTs are still taking off. It's 2022 and you guys have probably seen the headlines of NFT traffic on OpenSea still through the roof. People still making loads of money. I have the board bot on Twitter. I follow it and you can still see in a week you see board apes being traded for multiple months of Ethereum. So at least 100k USD and up and that's good. NFTs are awesome and I think despite what people are saying, I don't think they're going to go anywhere. All right, let's move on to our next piece of news. Our next piece of news today, of course, is about QuickSwap. So QuickSwap released this sort of graphic detailing how QuickSwap has changed from December 31st, 2020 to December 31st, 2021. And as usual, all the links to the stuff we talk about today are going to be in the show notes. So please have a look for yourself. But some really cool numbers here, right? Total volume, one year ago, $2.7 million. Total volume as of December 31st, right? $36.1 billion. That is impressive. Average daily volume, so right? About 365 days, $31,000 per day. But in December, 365 days, $99 million per day. Average number of daily users, 90 users. Average number of daily users, 20,000. 20,000 is still a bit on the low side, I think, but I mean, QuickSwap is Polygon. But I mean, 20,000 users contributing to 99 million. So there's quite obviously a large number of whales in there. Total volume, 300K, total volume locked, 845 million. Very cool. Exchange listings, one. The QuickSwap is on 27 listings. That's impressive. Telegram subscribers gone from nine to 19,000. Oh my God. So if you guys don't know this, uh, I hope you guys are sharing the Unmoon Telegram because we'd love to grow that much. A uh, total followers, right? 6,000 in December, 63,000 right now. So guys, I'm going to take a break and let's go off on the beaten path. And I would like you guys to please share our Telegram, our Discord, our Twitter, right? We want to increase our followers. If you're enjoying Unmoon, we're working hard on Soli, which is upcoming soon. We're working hard on other innovative products. Please share our socials so we can build up to have a big following. We'll like quick stop and see how it goes, right? So let's move on to the next piece of news, which is about Avogadro, of course. I think this is really cool. Avogadro is introducing their game Bible. It says, hey, friends, it's finally happening. We are excited to announce the release of the Gachiverse game Bible, a public facing game design document that will serve as a reference manual for all things Gotch. So that sounds like a mouthful, but what it is really simple, right? So uh, this is like a like a Wikipedia where it's go governed by the Avogadro DAO. It releases things in bite-sized pieces. This explains how stuff becomes canon. So canon means how stuff becomes like the rules, right? And this is not like the light paper, right? So there's book one, The Citadel, explains gameplay release schedule, parcel, alchemical tokenomics, installation represents, Avogachi traits, alchemical channeling, wearable traits, estate building, liquidators, districts, 
what is this document? The Gachiverse Gaming Bible is an ex external facing game design document that gives detailed information about gameplay, economy, and building within the Gachiverse game. So one of the things you've heard me complain about Avogachi is like, I love gaming and you guys know that, right? But to get involved with NFT games, get involved with play to earn games, there's quite a long process with purchasing assets, transferring it to your MetaMask, connecting your MetaMask, going through all these steps, confirming transactions, and then it's like you're paying money to play a game, which is normal. You pay $60, $70 to play a game normally. When you buy it on Steam or you buy it on the PlayStation Store, it's guaranteed. But I feel like in the crypto space at the moment, there are a lot of steps where you can make a mistake and lose your money. And you guys know the story of me right, buying AXS or Axie and then trying to get it into the Axie ecosystem and then having it stuck in my MetaMask since last year because I transferred it the wrong way. Hopefully this document helps with that. Got your universe release schedule, right? Stress test January 28th. That's really cool. Stress test mid-February. So that's cool, right? Like I think every sort of play to earn game or NFT game or metaverse game needs this kind of Bible, maybe not governed by a DAO, but something that has comprehensive documentation. Now, don't get me wrong, I I'm making this on as a podcast, as a YouTube video, and the YouTube videos are great, but a lot of people don't put in the effort, don't put in time codes. So when you're looking to find like, okay, how do I do this in the Avogadro universe? You have to scroll through the video and just click a random. Okay, hopefully I do it. Because who wants to watch a 20 or 30 minute video without freaking time codes? Okay, that is my rant over. I'm glad this is good for Avogachi. And let's move on to Cheetah. So let me say this Cheetah's news today, right? This is just a rumor. This is from the forums. And this is maybe you guys should take this with a pinch of salt, right? It is from the Polygon forums. So basically, what they're talking about here is a lot of whales are moving Chi outside the Polygon ecosystem. And Chi is one of the uh, sort of stable coin issuers or on Polygon, one of the main ones. And people are saying that is bad. And, and this guy gives an example right here of wrapped Chi on, oh, this is e Chi on Phantom. And that's not good. Like we talked about this, like Edelman Finance used to be part of the Pico token. When we rebalanced recently, they were moved out, but they've since, right, are moving from Polygon to Kronos, which is the crypto.com chain. And I think it's, it's not good, right? You, as an ecosystem, Polygon or Ethereum or Avalanche or Phantom, you want to keep projects in your ecosystem, especially projects that are dealing with stable coins, uh, because stable coins are like a backbone of any crypto ecosystem. So if this is true, this is not good. And Polygon and Chi need to figure out, or should say, Polygon need to incentivize Chi to keep chi inside the polygon ecosystem okay that is all i have to say about that what do you guys know do you guys know more than i do because if you do please share the information let's talk about dfyn again this is a bit of a older news but it's still pretty interesting dfyn is giving your favorite medic token in rewards check out these two pools right so you have a uh, wrapped bitcoin and medic and you get medic as a reward, which is really cool, and USDC and Matic, and you get Raptomatic as a reward, and there are the rates as well. So if you have Matic, uh, again, none of this is financial advice, you probably end up like getting 7% or 8%, maybe let's say on the low end, 5% and up, depending where you have your Matic, right? Because like in, in places like BlockFi, the mainstream sort of APY sites that a lot of people like I don't use BlockFi, I used to, but you might keep it there. So this might be an option for you to think about, right? To stake your wrapped Bitcoin, stake your Matic in an LP pool and get Matic back, which is nice, right? Because Matic and Polygon itself, are, we just covered the news themselves, is the news is really good. So you, if you do want to increase your Matic, this might be a good way for you to do that and get better than the standard 5 to 15% interest that you would in other places. And you can see the APR here at 32% and 82%, which is decent, definitely better than a lot of places mainstream people like me, like you guys would get. And let's move on to the last piece of news for today. The last piece of news for today, is, of course, is about Gains, right? Our newest member of the Polygon ecosystem. Gains 24-hour trading volume. This was on January 13th, so four days ago. So in one, in 24 hours, they had 100 million. That's impressive. 
So they're doing much better. And of course, their daily sort of like total trading volume is going up and up. I would definitely have a look at the gains website. It's gains.farm and you can see how well they're actually doing. There's even some actually some other news as well. If you, I didn't want to show this because it's a little bit complicated, but they mentioned like how if you did a leverage trade on gains, there's virtually zero spread with the way gains has set up its system. But if you're doing it on uh, DYDX, there would be a little bit of a spread, which can cause some problems for some people who are into leverage trading. But the coolest thing about gains at the moment is they are really amping up their PR game. So it says, right, 15K Polygon Dow Grant plus 10k gains from us used to purchase a marketing package with create DAO and create a DAO is basically a defined content marketing gets onboarding content creators get create on Uniswap so this is a somebody to help and promote gains which I think is really cool and they're a DAO which I thought was awesome like a DAO marketing agency or PR agency that's going to help gains grow their footprint in the crypto ecosystem and once gains grows right, once they expand, that's good for everybody who holds Pico and good for gains as well because they're really on top of their game when it comes to leverage trading. All right, guys, that is it for me. Don't forget to tune in Thursday. I will be doing a podcast with our newest member, uh, a very good writer from England, Ryan Wright. We might even try to do the podcast live, but I think that won't work because it's not going to be video. So we'll be just be doing a podcast. And then that should be up sometime uh, Friday, the podcast and the video on the weekend as usual. Uh, Ryan's really cool, very knowledgeable, much more knowledgeable than me. I'm looking forward to chatting with him. And that's it, guys. Then I will talk to you on Thursday, later on in the week. Okay, bye.